last year's miraculous success restored tradition to South Bend and woke the echoes for college football's most storied program. Today, Ty Willingham and Notre Dame continue their quest to return the Irish to the glory of yesteryear. But Purdue has had its own history of excellence, led by quarterbacking greats like Dawson, Greasy, Everett, and Breeze, just four in the long line that have produced a legacy at the position. Today, the seniors at Purdue get their last chance to beat the Irish of Notre Dame. The excitement of West Lafayette, Indiana. The Boilermaker special steaming into ross Aid Stadium, and the Boilermaker fans hoping to cook up some Irish stew today. They haven't been able to beat Notre Dame in the last three years. Who will have the luck today? We'll find out later. Right now, here's John Terry and Craig in New York. The Boilermakers have gone bowling every year. Joe Tiller has been the head coach. They're hoping to make it seven straight this year, and they take the field on their home field at ross Aid Stadium. Today they take on the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. Welcome to Ross H Stadium, everybody. You know, when Bob Greasy comes back, they just say when he walks in, Bob's back. <laughs> Partner, you played here, you starred here, you beat Notre Dame here. That's something that these Purdue players haven't done, the seniors yet. Well, they haven't. And Joe Tiller, in his seventh year, thinks that this may be his best season ever. And it's because of defense. He's always had offense. Nine starters returned from a defense that led the Big Ten in defense last year. Eight of them are seniors. Four of them have started for four years. And the best is number nine, free safety Stuart Swiger. He is one of the best safeties in the country. Many think he is the best. So 17 seniors will be trying to beat Notre Dame for the first time. They don't know who they're going to be trying to beat at quarterback yet. It's been the biggest question maybe in college football all week. Yeah, what do you do? It's a tough call. If you don't go with Carlisle Holiday, you're giving up on a three-year starter and a guy that started 24 games for you. If you go with Brady Quinn, you're going with inexperience, a guy that's as green as the Irish is, <laughs> and, he's, and he's never started a college game before. He's got all the talent. You know, you never know. I mean, this may be the start of a career for Brady Quinn. Do as Bob said, this is as good a group as Purdue's had in a long time. Phillips, Terrell, Grover, and Nesfield across the front wall. The linebackers, Landon Johnson, had a sensational game last week. Kudavides and Gilbert Gardner. And the secondary's got experience as well. True freshman Pollard is the only guy that hasn't played a lot in the secondary. Better things to do than always walk around and follow <laughs> you on Saturday and see when you're going to break my record. Yeah, let's get it over with. Notre Dame a little better starting field position this time. Grant though only got about a yard on the first down carry. Landon Johnson landed right on top. Not sure Stu Schwagert will get his own movie, but he's definitely a cult hero here. <laughs> first down following the timeout. Notre Dame from its own 32-yard line. Quinn on the give for a couple. So Julius Jones, Brady Quinn knows that at this level it's a whole lot different than a year ago when he was playing in high school. It's completely different. Um, I mean, really, the speed of the game, uh, just you know how good the athletes are. Uh, you know the, the the effort you have to give. You know, you kind of didn't think you know maybe in high school you know that you could like work harder, or, uh, you know, play better than you had. But it's like it's it's a whole other dimension. And you just kind of make that step uh, kind of without noticing. Back in West Lafayette, where Purdue leads seven nothing. And Notre Dame takes over at the 25-yard line. Aerial coverage for today's game, courtesy of the Outback Steakhouse airship, Bloomin' Onion. Nice to have him along with us. Give him some great shots on what has been a pretty day earlier this morning. A couple showers just moments ago. And about 67 degrees at game time. Quinn back to throw, getting some pressure. Hit as he throws, it's intercepted. Picked off by Purdue. Kudavides, the linebacker's got it. Gardner hit Quinn, and Kudavides took the tip. Purdue had a blitz on. Kudavides was in there. Gardner was in there. Let's go ahead and run it. Watch right here. Now, that's 16. That's Gardner. He's going to get in there. Right in his face. When you're a quarterback, you have to feel what's happening and move around a little bit. That's just an aggressive play by the Purdue defense that causes a turnover. Notre Dame got the turnovers last year. This year so far, Purdue's getting them. Kudavides, who had three interceptions last year, has one in this game, and now it's an end around, and it's Williams trying to get to the corner. And he's run out of bounds 
after about a two-yard pickup, Derek Curry. You can see the frustration on the face of the youngster, and he took a pretty good shot as well when he well, threw that interception. As, a, as we started off the game saying, and as we showed in the offensive line, when you lose your five offensive line, your starting offensive lineman, I don't care which quarterback you got back there, you're not going to have success. And yep. Notre Dame has not had success. Only three touchdowns in three games. Kevin and Gus was right on the shot. All right, Gus, good grab. Gus is Mr. Do Everything. Yeah, I knew he had yeah. good hands. Yep. Third down, 14. Five wide outs. Quinn from the gun. Pressure on again. They throw a little slip screen. And it only gets out to about the 23-yard line to Stovall. But a flag flies in late. And now a few fists flying away from the play. Was a sack by maybe the length of the football. He didn't quite get back to the line of scrimmage. Only two sacks allowed in 117 attempts. That's pretty good. Slayton to punt. Montez Duff trying to track it down. Takes it on a good first bounce. And then gets out to about the 19-yard line. It's been excellent coverage today by Purdue's punt team. 44-yard kick and a nine-yard return for Vontez Duff, number 34. We're down to 127 remaining in the first quarter. It's Purdue 10 0. One of the areas that Purdue has improved on is their special teams, especially in this series with Notre Dame. You go back over the last four or five games, and it's a special teams play that has hurt Purdue. Last year, Duff had a punt return for a touchdown. They scooped up a couple of fumbles and went in for touchdowns. The defense of Purdue did not allow a score last year to Notre Dame, and they still lost the ball game. Right. And again, Notre Dame looking at not very good field position from its own 19-yard line. Quinn, this time he had it. Did he catch it? Nope, it hit the turf. Well, this time he threw a strike yeah. to McKnight, and McKnight didn't hold it. Now, admittedly, he got pasted after he got his hands on the football, but that was a good throw. A lot of young players on this Notre Dame offense. McKnight is a true sophomore, only his second year. Hits him right in his hand, should have caught it. Now it's on the ground. Almost caught it on the second try. Yeah. You're going to get hit anyway you catch it or not catch it, so you may as well catch it and help the offense a little bit here. Second down at 10. McKnight in motion. It's up here. Quinn looking that way. Slide it on the blitz. Fires incomplete. And Jenkins looking for an interference call out there and doesn't get it. Rocks back the defensive coordinator trying to put pressure on the young quarterback. Says, I don't want, I don't want the offensive coordinator in the booth calling the play and, and not having the quarterback have to think it. I don't want him to be a robot out there. I want to, I want to pressure him. I want to put pressure on him. I want him to think and have to change things around. Rock said basically wanted to take it out of the hands of Bill Diedrich and into the hands of an 18-year-old quarterback. So far, they've done that. To the players, break some tackle, and get the big yard. That was a big play for Notre Dame. Stovall, three catches today. That's as many as he had coming into the game for the first three games of the season. And now the running game's all bottled up again. Grant, no gain on the play. Villarreal. His defensive tackle spot made the stop. So Grant, four carries, has only three yards. And Purdue defense hasn't given up anything. Starting the second quarter, 10-0 Purdue. Welcome back, Brad Nessler and Bob Greasy at ross Aid Stadium. Nice to have you along with us. Partner, what do you think of the freshman quarterback so far? He's uh, getting into a rhythm a little bit. His last few throws have been much better on target. Uh, he's got the wind behind him now. Uh, uh, all those nerves are settled now, and he should be able to play some football. Finally, they come up with a third and short. They've been looking at third and tens throughout the first 15 minutes. Will they get it on the ground from Julius Jones? Looking for the corner. Got there enough to get the first down anyway. Picked up about four. Sean Phillips ran him down from his defensive end spot, and those two have a little chat after the tackle. Sean's been around a long time, and he <laughs> is itching to get at Notre Dame. This is the third straight year he's had a different number. He's number 15 now. And they use that number 15 because he will play some tight end on offense. Yeah. Already has graduated. Came here as uh, classes for grad school. Came here as a tight end, defensive end. Says, I'm, says, in fact, Jim Chaney said yesterday he's the best tight end we got. Yep, but he's playing on the other side of the ball most of the time anyway. Jones, no gain again. Kudavides in on the stop. Gilbert Gardner lost his hat amid everything. Still looking for it. 
It's tough running on this Purdue defense because they are so quick from left to right. Got a lot of speed, not a lot of not a lot of big guys up there. Guys that can move and can run, especially the linebackers. They're seventh in the country against the rush, and they're only giving up 1.6 yards per carry. That's pretty stout. Yep. Now you get down to the end of the ball game. Where's that focus? How is he going to concentrate? Will he be too tired? Those are the things we have to be. Notre Dame has to be concerned about. This. Will he still have his stomach intact yeah, after I, too many more again, hits I, like I, that? I go back to the offensive line. Ryan, the offensive lineman, should have stayed with his man and just lost him. They're readjusting the ball. He's been hit and knocked down. Not officially sacked yet, but you couldn't tell Brady that, I'm pretty sure. He would tend to argue with you. Right now, he's working out of the gun on third and ten. Steps up again. He got hammered. Let's go, and it's almost intercepted by Swaggart. Had his hands on it. Omar Jenkins, the intended receiver, and Terrell again is the guy. You just that know hit Quinn. You just know that he thought that he should have picked that ball off. John Phillips holding his wrist. Let's go ahead and run to run this play. You're going to see the receivers downfield. Got a little roll to the right side. He's going to stop, and when he throws the ball. Right here, Swigert's going to think that he's got this one picked off. Just doesn't get it. Two tight ends. Julius Jones trying to follow his blockers. Just nothing there. Now that nice job by Sean Phillips yeah, again. The defensive line is whipping the offensive line. Sean Phillips, big number 15. Great speed coming off the corner. This time he just powered through the would-be blockers to make the stop. Watch the pit, the offensive and defensive line. Right here, see he's got the outside technique on him. He says, you're not getting around the end. And then when he jucks back inside of Stevenson, number 74, Phillips gets back in and makes the play inside too. Loss of a yard. Don't let that 15 number fool you. That's right. That's a big guy. <laughs> Touchdowns this season. Notre Dame looking for one. Quinn throws, caught, down to about the two. McKnight makes a tough catch. And Schweiger with the stop, and it's going to be third down and goal. Right about at the three-yard line is where they'll spot it down. Here's a look at the big strapping freshman. Throwing on first down, trying that slip screen again out to Omar Jenkins, and Purdue's just all over that. Yeah, that's Jeff Farrell uh, that safety just read that all the way. And it was a bread and butter play for Notre Dame last year, even when their offense was in a little better gear. That jailbreak thing, the screen out there, and Schweigert and company says, you know what, we've seen that. Hey, Purdue, Schweiger, one Purdue of the best safeties in the business. Purdue taking time out. There's Stu, what he's done this year. Schweigert, the defensive captain, suffered through some injuries last season. Healthy this year and playing like it. Take a look at our Pacific Life game summary so far. Well, Notre Dame can't run the can't run the ball. 15 yards rushing. That 180 yards passing they got was a lot on the ones that Purdue can't do anything. 92 yards passing. Third down conversions. Purdue only one of eight. Time of possession about the same. And and the average start. Purdue's had the best of it from their own 41 yard line. But. Uh, the one play that Notre Dame hit, the one big play, got him right back in this ball game. Tell you what, you take away that 36-yard touchdown pass that Orton threw to Williams early in the ball game, and there's not much passing there for Purdue. And 10-24 remaining in the third quarter. Notre Dame is in pretty good shape. They're down by only six. They started a true freshman quarterback who has played well, better as the half went on. And, and you know, you've got to think, like I said, he is going to be your guy long term. The defense is playing well. You're in a game on the road against the Boilermakers, and that's where you wanted to be. So they got to do 16 of those kind of push ups. And here in West Lafayette, Indiana, 16 to 10, Purdue, courtesy. Of that last field goal of 29 yards by Ben Jones. The leading rusher was six yards and not getting anything done on the ground. And Stovall, who dropped that one, caught the long touchdown pass for the uh, for the Irish just before halftime. Second down at 10. Long handoff. Grants 
Broke a couple of tackles. Best run he's had today. Schweigert brings him down, but not before he got seven. Second down and three. Upcoming at the 10 minute mark of the third quarter. Third down and three, I beg your pardon. I said second down. Third and three upcoming. Third down and three. Quinn rolls out, might keep it. Will, first down, Notre Dame. Nice run. Five yards by Quinn, so use some of that size. Yep. Rolled out there and bounces his way for a first down. They're, they're saying Purdue is trying to say fumble, and the officials are just trying to unpile people. Well, Brad, they did, he did fumble that football. Before he hit the ground, the ball is going to pop out. And he's not quite sure, as you look at this, I think when he goes towards the ground, where that ball is, you should watch it come out right oh, there. Yeah. Oh, yeah. There was a pileup, but watch there. It goes right between his legs. It's off to the side. He ends up with it because no one is really aware of where it is. Came right back to him. It did. Came right back to him. Well, right there, it's in between them. Yeah. Came back to a spot that Brady just as soon not lay on a football that long, yeah. but well, nonetheless. He, <laughs> he needed some of those big arms to get that ball yeah, back. Yeah, he did. This is things you're going to have to put up with. Quinn off play action, gets hit as he throws again, and another drop ball, this need, one by Powers Neal. Yeah, he needs some help, though. Somebody, I mean, the quarterback is taking the hit from two guys coming in. He gets rid of the ball and gets it to where Powers Neal could catch it, and this is the second one that uh, Powers Neal drops it. Two guys in his face, Swigert. I mean, that's a big-time play by Swigert and by Quinn. <laughs> Swigert says, hey, punk, <laughs> little you're only 18. <laughs> little intimidation there. <laughs> <laughs> Stu's been around the block a couple times. Yes, he has. Third yeah. down. He's asking for a little crowd noise even for the defense. Third and 13. Swigert has been coming a lot. They have hit him. 7-24 remaining third quarter. Purdue leads Notre Dame here in West Lafayette by six. Series now for Purdue. And Slayton's got a punt. Montez Duff, you keep kicking it to him. Sometime he's going to do something with it. At the 21, gets back to about the 28. 46-yard kick. 6.22 remaining in the third quarter. Purdue still holding on to a six-point lead at home. Away to the library. <laughs> Put Bob in. <laughs> Not until the next series, at least. He doesn't want to play for Notre Dame. <laughs> yeah. Hey, Bob, that ball might have been round when you were playing, but they still remember you. Yes, yeah. they do. Yeah, that's true. Quinn waits, fires deep, nobody home except Schwager. Interception number 15 of his career. The all-time interception leader's got another one. A guy who wants to beat Notre Dame probably worse than anybody else on this team just comes up with a big interception and there was nobody back there except him. He's a four-year starter. That might have been the easiest interception of his four-year career. This ball, he was either hit when he threw it or this was an awful throw. It just fluttered up in the air. I think he gets hit just as he's throwing. Let's watch. That's Ray Edwards, the other number 10, the other freshman well, for Purdue. He didn't get hit. Maybe the ball got deflected. Maybe his hand got hit. Whatever, it's going the other way. So taking over at the 47 after a 22-yard interception return. So, as we said, the all-time interception record continues up to 15 now for Stu Schwager. Yeah, that, that kid will, will go very high in the draft, probably very high in the first round. He is one heck of a player, was a quarterback, safety in high school, was a track guy, can run like the Dickens. And, Won the uh, state 100-meter dash yeah. at Saginaw, Michigan as a senior. Numbers aren't helping the cause any. They dropped so many passes last week in their loss to Michigan State. And today, I'd say uh, they've had as many, five or six, yeah. much like a week ago. And now the crowd coming to life. Well, offensively, you just have to be careful that you don't make a mistake back here. Because you're in your own end zone. That's where he'll take the shotgun snap. Quinn, look out. Got rid of it. Sailed one. And almost caught and then almost intercepted. Oh, boy, does that give me... <laughs> when that ball flutters out of your own end zone, goes over one guy, is tipped in the air. I mean, these are the things that, that, that Quinn is going to straighten out in the next games, in the next couple of years. 
to be a good quarterback. That one took off on him, and then Samarja yeah. was back there and almost made the grab. He kicked it in the air, and it was nearly intercepted. So as Bob said, punt it, hold away, and <laughs> Quinn went the other. Here, this will give you a headache right here. Mm. This is a package of Brady Quinn and some of the hits he's taken today. And every time he's gotten hit, he's gone down. Yes, he's been a knockdown every time he's gotten hit. Not like a boxing match. Been knocked down 14 times on being hit 14 times. Quinn did not go the wrong way. The back went the wrong way the last time. Okay. Quinn from his own end zone. Throws, intercepted by Gardner. And he almost ran over his defensive coordinator who was trying to congratulate him on the sideline. From behind the offense, Quinn steps up, that's good. Just throw it, you cannot take chances down in that area of the field. Last year, it was Notre Dame's defense turning at the turnovers. This year, Purdue's got their third turnover of the game. There's Brock's back. He almost ran him over. His <laughs> defensive coordinator, he sort of headbutted him on the way by. At well, the 12-yard line. Gardner, Gardner has intercepted one and caused one That's to be right. intercepted. He was the one that put the hit on that Kudavidi's intercepted. And this one for the Purdue fans has gone somewhat as they wanted it to. If they get a touchdown here, the way that they're playing defense and the fact that Notre Dame really has only had one big play offensively, it could be a long way back for Notre Dame to try to make it four straight over the Boilermakers. Boyd's a guy that knows where the end zone is. Got a couple touchdowns on the ground so far this year. They fake it to him. Wide open. Touchdown, Purdue. And it's the tight end. The linebacker, the outside rush in that we talked about. Sean Phillips. said earlier maybe he's the best tight end on the team problem is he plays defense and they give him a little sugar at the goal line well Jim Cheney said yesterday we want to get him the ball and so did Joe Tiller he said we want to get him the ball you know he came here as a tight end he wanted to play tight end we asked him to play defensive end and he moved over extra point is up and good so it's Sean Phillips in as a tight end from Kyle Orton. One of those seniors that wants to beat Notre Dame might have just helped his cause big time. The Boilermakers, 23, Notre Dame 10. Orton's second touchdown pass of the day. A year ago tomorrow, against Minnesota that he had his first touchdown catch as a tight end in goal line situation. So he gets one every year just around the late stages of September. As Ryan Grant takes it out for a first down, we take it out to New York and John Saunders. Hit start. John here, it is 23 to 10. Purdue leads Notre Dame. Quinn in the pocket, goes to his safety valve out at the 40-yard line, and it's going to be very close to another first down to Omar Jenkins. Might have gotten it. Gardner got out there. Gardner, the guy that had the last interception that oh, led yeah. to the touchdown. Set up the short field for the offense. Uh, they didn't have to go very far. Gardner's had a nice game. Tipped one earlier that was, an inter was intercepted and uh, intercepted this one himself. So it's first down Notre Dame. They know now they've got to get some drives going, and they need a couple of them. And there's only 11.45 left. Irish at their own 48-yard line. Quinn rolls, wants to throw a screen back the other way and does to Clark, but it's all read beautifully by the Purdue defense. Jolovich made the play. And it's going to be second down and about 15. Ty Willingham took over this program last year. He just got to, they're going to have to learn with him. They're just going to have to be patient. Let him learn on the field, making mistakes, hopefully many more pluses than minuses. Third and 15, deep down the middle for Jenkins, and Schweigert's got another one. Intercepted. And you hear the chance of stew for Stuart Schweiger. Another one of those seniors 
getting his last shot at Notre Dame. And they're getting oh so close to finally getting the sweet taste of victory. 10.43 to go in the ball game. Purdue's got the ball back with the lead. Stu Schweigert, one of the captains of this team, and you can tell why. Boy, what a play he made on that overthrow. As Quinn tried to take a shot to Jenkins down the middle, and Schweigert was there for his second interception of the day. And the 16th of his brilliant Purdue career. First down, Boilermakers on their own 20. On the toss, pick up of a couple for... Jared Void, and let's go back and take a look at that last defensive, Jim. Well, this is what he's trying to get to this receiver straight down the field. Right there is Swigert. Now watch Swigert as the guy goes straight down the middle of the field. Swigert's on the hash where he's supposed to be. When the ball is thrown right now, this is the guy that's going to make the play on it. Watch how quickly he gets there. That's the best catch of the day. No doubt. Here, well, watch, watch, the, uh, watch the eyes right here. Always looking down the middle, down the middle. Swigert is watching his head, watching his eyes. That's attracting the safeties to where you go to throw it. Young quarterbacks learn to look off the safeties and then throw. Ben, there you see. <laughs> Those are some Purdue black stripes and peas yep. on the side of the helmet that are dinging him upside of the head. It's been that kind of day. 15 hits. Oh, that's a lot of hits. <laughs> that's a lot of hits. That's a lot of knockdowns. That's like a Don King boxing promotion when the fix is in. 14 knockdowns. No sacks, but it doesn't really matter. Trailing by 13. Quinn flags down. He's hammered again. The ball is loose. Whistle dead, though. Got a flag. Well, this kid's taking a beat. He really is. Craig Terrell's the guy that caused the fumble, but the flags came before that hit ever occurred. Here's a call. Holding on the offense. The penalty to decline. First down. Purdue takes over on downs. Take a look right here. This is Terrell, number 92. Follow him. Gives a little spin on the guard. Now he's past him. And now Quinn says, oh, I got to get out of here. Look at this. He just takes him down. Oof. Terrell is 6'3", 290. He's had 27, 28 career tackles for loss, and that's another one. This guy has been, he's been in the Notre Dame backfield more than some of the running backs have been. I don't know about that. I don't know if the arm was coming forward or not. Brady Quinn, 44 passes, 244 yards. The four interceptions are the gloomy spot of that. And Orton only 50% today, but Kyle threw two touchdown passes, one early in the ballgame, and then one to Sean Phillips, who was in as a tight end, normally the defensive end and goal line. Notre Dame defense came up with five sacks, but Purdue's defense countered with those four interceptions. Well, that's what you're going to get when you start a true freshman quarterback. You're going to get a lot of good, and you're going to get those bad, those four interceptions over there. That just comes with playing a, a young quarterback. Week, they had some kind of week. This pass completes, trying to break tackles and doing so is Samarja. And let's check in quickly with John in New York. Today's Chevrolet players of the game. That guy for Purdue, Stu Schweigert, his 15th and 16th career interceptions. Maurice Stovall went over 100. And 50 yards receiving, including a touchdown. In recognition of their effort, Chevrolet will make a $1,000 contribution to each university's general scholarship fund. And that's going to be one of the happy 17 seniors in about 65 seconds right there, number nine. Stu Schweiger. And now you hear the chance of Stu as they just made the announcement that we've picked him as the Chevrolet player of the game. He had that interception earlier on a fluttering pass after Quinn was hit as he threw. Returned to 22 yards. He just looks like a player, doesn't he? Yep, and then that, as Bob said, and Swanee agreed, the catch of the day on that second interception. Quinn throwing on the run and fourth down and maybe a final try unless Quinn can convert as he did on the last fourth down. 
going to the end zone and overthrows him. That'll be pass number 60, and now the celebration for the 17 seniors and the guys that have started from the get-go at Purdue and have never beaten Notre Dame, and it's just starting now. There's one of them. He was our player of the game, but he's got friends over there, including Johnson and Kudavides, who had an interception today. Phillips, Gardner, all those guys. Gardner. Gardner. Yep. They played very, very well. Terrell had an outstanding game. This series lost some of its luster when Notre Dame won 11 in a row from 1986 to 1996 and did it in convincing fashion. But since Joe Tiller has showed up here, this is a different Purdue. And you don't put Purdue on your homecoming schedule anymore. And they're about to go to 3-1. and one, And they will officially move back into the top 25 in the coaches' poll. They're already number 22 in the writers' poll. They win it over Notre Dame today, 23-10, to 10, our final score. So the Irish drop another one, Purdue at home. A big, big win for them with the Big Ten conference schedule looming starting next week. But Brady Quinn, boy, did that kid put up a fight in a losing effort. Give him a couple aspirin. 23-10, our final score. ABC Sports is online at ESPN.com. Search ABC Sports. Monday, don't forget, at 9 Eastern, division rivals meet. It's the Packers and the Bears on Monday Night Football. Once again, our final score, Purdue 23, Notre Dame 10. For old Bob Greasy, old number 12, and Lynn Swan, Brad Nestler saying so long from West Lafayette, Indiana. Purdue a winner. This has been a presentation of ABC Sports Championship Television. Today's game.